doesn't love a good race? But this time, you're going head first at 132 kilometers per hour down an icy track. Only 2.5 centimeters separates the hard, cold ice from your face. Hold on tight, because you're about to realize why this extreme sport has been banned from the Olympics twice. Here's how to survive skeleton racing. This extraordinarily dangerous sliding sport was born in 1884 in Switzerland. And no, its name isn't a reference to what you'd end up looking like if you crash. It comes from the bony appearance of the sled. In the sport of skeleton, you need to be smart to win. It's not as simple as letting gravity handle the race for you. Being the fastest slider involves picking the best line, minimizing friction, and maintaining good aerodynamic form. All of that while you're trying to not get your head smashed on the ice at blistering speeds. Which body part would feel as heavy as a bowling ball? Why might visualizing a pencil help you win? How would you control a sled with no brakes? Step 1. Start with your sled. In this race, the only buffer between you and a rock-hard surface is your sled, so you'd better pick the right one. It should have a steel frame topped with fiberglass so your body can fit like a glove. It needs two handles, one of which you'll grasp during the running start of the race. Don't forget the shock-absorbing bumpers on each corner of the sled in case you hit the track's edge. For men's skeleton, the sled's maximum weight allowed is 43 kilograms. For women's, it's 35 kilograms. Of course, you could go lighter, but that doesn't mean you should. On the contrary, pick the heaviest sled possible so you can take advantage of gravity on your way down. Step 2. Picture a pencil. Once you dive headfirst onto the sled, you'll have to maintain the right posture. Picture a pencil placed on the back of your neck. You need to keep your head tilted forward just enough to keep the pencil in place. Apply pressure using your shoulders, elbows, and knees to slightly alter direction and stay away from the rails. Even a quick tap of the toes can help. Keeping everything in contact with the sled will help you maintain good aerodynamic form. Step 3. Get some traction. To go as fast as you can, you need to reduce wind resistance. Skip the baggy winter clothes. Instead, you want a skin-tight Lycra speed suit. The most important piece of equipment is your helmet, which needs to not only be light and strong, but also offer enough protection for your chin if you make contact with the ice. You're also going to need some gloves. You also want to get racing spikes on your shoes. This will provide the traction you need during the sprinting start of the race. Step 4. Run. Now speaking about that sprint, it is crucial that you run that 27 meters as fast as possible. Starting with a weak run means you'll have a harder time maximizing momentum throughout the rest of the race. This starting position is not a comfortable one. You'd be crouched over and pushing a heavy sled with one hand with your legs doing most of the work. Hitting the gym often and working on those would be a great idea. Step 5. Don't overdo it. Skeleton is not considered a contact sport, but it can feel like one. Tracks have several twists, and while they look fun and exhilarating, they'll apply excruciating pressure on your body. Racers face G-forces up to five times higher than normal. In milliseconds, you'll feel like your head weighs the same as a bowling ball, and you'll be struggling to keep it above the ice. Fighting those immense amounts of pressure can wear down your neck, so you don't want to overdo it. Practice makes perfect, but even experienced racers won't do more than three runs a day. It was wild, but you survived your first skeleton race. Now you might want to try something a little warmer, like a water slide. We can't promise it would be less dangerous, but we can help you with that too, here on How to Survive.